Heavy booted feet pounded up the street past the house. The small windows that looked on the street were shuttered. Like most houses in Jerusalem, this one preferred to peer inward onto its own courtyard than out at the wider world. Most of the time Reuven took that for granted. He'd been used to it most of his life. This once, though, he wouldn't have minded seeing what was going on. All of a sudden he changed his mind. After shouts in Hebrew and Arabic, guns started hammering. A bullet slammed through the side wall, cracked past his head, and was through the other wall before his jaw got done dropping. His mother had a better idea of what to do under such circumstances than he did. On the floor, she shouted, get down, lie flat, the bullets will pass over us. When Reuven's sisters didn't move fast enough to suit her, she pushed them down and lay on them, ignoring their squawks. Reuven had just got down on the floor himself when a burst of fire gave the front wall some ventilation it hadn't had before. Esther and Judith stopped squawking. Out on the street, someone started screaming and didn't stop. Reuven couldn't tell whether the shrieks were in Hebrew or Arabic. Pain had no separate tongue. Pain was its own universal language. He got to his feet. What are you doing? his mother demanded. Lay down again. I can't, he answered. I've got to get my bag. Someone's hurt bad out there. I'm not a doctor, not yet, but I'm closer to being one than anybody else around. He waited for his mother to scream at him. To his astonishment, she smiled instead. A strange, sweet, sad smile. Your father did the same thing when the lizards took Jerusalem away from the British. Go on, then. God watch over you. Reuven snatched his black leather bag out of his bedroom and hurried back to the front door. Predictably, his sisters wanted to do whatever he did. As predictably, his mother wouldn't let them. He went out the door, certain his mother would lock and bar it after him. Bullets still flew, though not so often now. An automobile burned at the end of the block, sending a pyre of stinking black smoke into the sky. All the flames were orange or yellow, none the almost invisible pale blue of burning hydrogen. An old motor car, not one of the newer models on the lizard pattern. The screaming came from the other side of the motor car. Feeling naked and exposed, Reuven came around the machine to do what he could for the wounded man. He'd just stopped beside him when, from behind, someone said, What have we got here, son? Hello, father. Reuven said as Moisha Rusi got down on one knee beside him. The two of them looked very much alike there side by side, pale skin, dark hair, narrow, strong, cheekboned faces, save that Moisha was going bald. His son continued, I haven't even had a chance to look at him yet. Don't need any fancy lizard tools for this diagnosis, his father said, a burst of three in the belly. He pointed to the holes in the fighter's shirt. They had some blood oozing from them, but the real flood of it came from the man's back. Reuven gulped a little. Dissections in medical school were much neater than this, and the subjects didn't scream.